We start today's show with the end of the Mike Conley Jr. era in Memphis. Conley is going to the Utah Jazz in exchange for Grayson Allen, Kyle Korver, Jay Crowder, the 23rd pick in Thursday's draft, and a future first-round pick, leak sources tell Woj. Let's start here, Byron. How much better does Conley make the Jazz? I definitely think he makes him a much better basketball team because he is one of the better point guards in this league. I think he's underrated as far as a, a lot of the point guards that you talk about. He's a guy that can get other guys involved, but Mike can also score, and that's big. That's something that Rubio couldn't do mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. So I like what the Utah Jazz did with making this trade. I like Mike Conley a lot. Well, I mean, this is all going to come down to whether he can stay healthy or not, right? I mean, they, they've had Ricky Rubio, and when they had Rubio who was, when he was healthy, they were a great basketball team. But when he wasn't healthy, then it puts a different kind of pressure on Donovan Mitchell to play in a role that he's not necessarily suited for. Right. If Conley's healthy and he's able to play the point, that puts Donovan in more of his natural position, which is that scoring combo guard spot. And the Jazz have a whole new look. Byron, how do you feel about this addition and how it helps Donovan Mitchell? Well, I, again, I, like Ramona said, it takes a lot of pressure off of him. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to necessarily have the ball in his hands all the time. You got another guy who can make plays for himself and for his teammates in Mike Conley. So, again, I, I really love this backcourt. They're young. Yep. Uh, the, you know, the biggest question is if Mike can stay healthy on a consistent basis, this could be one of the better backcourts in the NBA. They've been a great defensive team already. Yes. Now they yeah. add another great defender yes. in Mike Conley. Yes. Teams may, may find it tough to score like 95, 100 points on this team in today's NBA. Well, Mike's like an opportunistic defender, right? Mm -hmm. like he's a crafty guy. He's not the biggest point guard out there, but he's smart. Rubio was, too. He just was never out there, right? He was there for a few games here, but you couldn't count on him consistently. Right. I think, though, this is, this is resetting this whole era for the Jazz because right. – He's Donovan Mitchell is ready to take that next jump, right? We thought he was ready this year, but he's he's really got to do it this year. Um, it, and and I think that Mike gives him the opportunity to do that because of his veteran nature, because he's been so deep into the playoffs. And of course, look, let's face it, they uh, the Jazz are trying to surge in a Western Conference that's up for yeah. grabs. So, uh, speaking of the other side of this, though, Memphis is reportedly drafting the heir apparent to Conley in John Morant tomorrow night. But Ramona, did they get enough back for Conley from Utah? I mean, look, if you compare that to the Anthony Davis trade, no, but this is where we get into this in the NBA. Anthony Davis is a lot better than Mike Conley. Agreed. Okay? Mm -hmm. Anthony Davis is a young star in his prime who's not making that much money, relatively speaking. Yeah, he's going to hit free agency as well, but you have a reasonable expectation he's going to stay. So, you know, Jay, Jay will fit in there if they keep him. However, I don't know if he's going to stay there. Or right, not. right. He could um, get bought out. He could get bought out. Um, so they didn't get that much back, but Grayson Allen was a first-round pick, and he showed some signs last year. They, they didn't get a lot, and I, and I don't know how much the bidding really was on Conley at this stage because of where he is injury-wise, but also contractually. Yeah, if Corver gets waived, uh, yeah. they only owe him about three and a half million dollars yeah. or something like that, so it's about half the salary. Byron, what do you make of the end of the grit and grind era, though, in Memphis? <laughs> about time. <laughs> Play some ball. Get up and down the floor. Have some fun. You yeah. know, instead of just trying to grind it out every single night. That ain't the way the game is played anymore. Yeah. You know, everybody's trying to play an up-tempo style of basketball. So now you got some young guys. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a, a, a great, a great little point guard coming in this league at the number two pick, and you got some other young guys around him. So I think they have finally figured it out. Listen, you know, Casal, Conley, those guys were mainstays in Memphis for so many years, and they did extremely well in the Western Conference. So now you have to turn the page, and you got you bringing in some fresh faces, some some fresh legs. Yep. And that's the way this NBA is right now. It's an up and down type game. And you I'm going have the some other horses. way. I'm going the other You're going to miss grit and grind? I don't yes. want to see no more of that. <laughs> we saw so, enough of that in New York. I want to see no more of that. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I covered grit and grind a couple times during the playoffs. Yeah. During, got to a conference those. finals. Yeah, I got yeah. to a conference finals. And, and this was always a team that I, I wished could have been healthy all together at the right time, right? That year that they played the Warriors, the first year that in 2015. They were up 2-1. They were up 2-1. Yeah. And then Conley broke his face. Mm -hmm. Remember? And like, just... Like, that's yeah, the best no, way to put it. it he it broke done. his face. They were done. And they were done. And I really believe that that type of style, because it's so different than the way the rest of the game is played, could have done something in this. Like, we never really got to see how far they could go. They needed a dynamic then. They need a dynamic score, yeah, though. Then, could, have, could have done something then. Yeah. Now, I don't think so. Yeah. But it's an adaptive style. Like, this was everybody's playing one way. We're going to go the other because this right. is what our personnel are. Right. And sometimes you have to go the other way. Like, yeah. Well, success, Pop has done that. Yeah. Pop has, has yeah. kind of zigged while everyone's yeah. zagging. Uh, he, his team shoots less threes, even though when yeah. they do shoot them, uh, they're one of the top teams at actually knocking them down. So there is some 
thing to that, but I, I just think they didn't have enough dynamic players, and you still need dynamic wings, I think, particularly to, to win in this league. Ramona, but you said the key thing. The, the key element to all this is you got to play to your strength mm -hmm. as an organization. Yep. That was their strength, was to, to bump and grind type of basketball because they had guys who could yeah, do Tony that. Allen, yeah, Tony Allen, Zach They Randolph. had guys who can do that. So, yeah. you know, you got to give them a lot of credit. They were able to do it for a number of years. Now that book is kind of being changed a little bit. That team was uh, full of the all back alley team, right? Yeah. The guys you don't want to <laughs> fight. You didn't want to fight Zebo. No, you you didn't want to fight Tony Allen. You want yeah. them to be on your side. Exactly. Right. Yeah, right. for sure.